Disney sure seems to be buying everything nowadays. I, for one, salute our new corporate overlords. With their acquisition of Fox finally a done deal after months of legal mumbo jumbo, the door is now open for the X-Men, the Fantastic Four, and even Deadpool to finally make their long-awaited debut in the MCU. We'll let you know how the Disney-Fox merger is going to change the future of the MCU forever, and even tell you how we think it'll go down. X-Men now that the merger is officially done, the X-Men are going to be making their first appearance in Avengers Endgame. Okay, it probably won't. Scratch that, it definitely won't happen that early. Unless you believe a Reddit theory that has Wolverine making his grand entrance in the post credits scene. But it'll happen in the future for sure. The X-Men have been in their own bubble at Fox for a while, but now they can finally enter the MCU. We expect them to have a completely new cast of characters though. Yes, that means we probably won't be seeing Hugh Jackman as the MCU's Wolverine, but with how Marvel Studios is with casting, we're sure they'll nail it like they always do. The question is, how will the X-Men be introduced into the MCU? Excuse me, I'm Eric Lentra. Charles Xavier. Go f*** yourself. We don't expect them to just show up, introduce themselves, and shake everybody's hand. Scarlet Witch could be the one to bring them into the fold, since she technically is a mutant. But another theory is that the X-Men will cross over through another dimension. It sounds crazy, but you know what else is crazy? The Quantum Realm and the Time Stone. So fiddling with alternate dimensions and time travel is a direction the MCU is going. Either way, we're sure the X-Men will be a big part of the future of the MCU. Fantastic Four The X-Men aren't the only heroes who can now enter the fold. Even the Fantastic Four can. Seeing Mr. Fantastic, Invisible Girl, Human Torch, and The Thing in the MCU is enough to have us salivating at the mouth. But it also gives us a bit of PTSD. You see, the Fantastic Four comics are great, but the movies, not so much. Not even Chris Evans playing the Human Torch was enough to save those movies from mediocrity. And don't even get us started on the really old Fantastic Four movie that was so bad that Marvel actually had to pay the director off to make sure the movie never saw the light of day. Luckily, now that the right people at Marvel Studios are in charge of the Fantastic Four, we can finally get a good movie about the foursome. Marvel breathed some new life into Spider-Man in Spider-Man Homecoming, after the disaster that was The Amazing Spider-Man, so we have no doubt that they could do the same thing with the Fantastic Four. We feel like the best way to introduce the Fantastic Four would be through their own MCU movie, giving them a great standalone film, similar to what they did with Spider-Man. The Fantastic Four are such key characters for Marvel, so we have no doubt they'll be a huge part of the MCU moving forward. Deadpool One of the most controversial heroes out there is Deadpool. After all, he's called the Merc with a mouth for a reason, and we would love to see the fourth wall breaker make his way into the MCU. We're just not sure how. He's a part of Fox, so now Deadpool is Marvel property. But the issue isn't with rights. It all has to do with the nature of the character himself. Where the f is everyone? Deadpool movies are rated R and chock full of adult jokes and crude humor while Marvel Studios typically produces more family-friendly content. Language. Sure, there's violence, but it's not excessive. So how is Deadpool going to fit into that? It's like trying to shove a square into a hole made for a circle, but we're not going to doubt Marvel Studios. If you think about it, it's a pretty easy fix. Let Deadpool be himself in his standalone movies. But when he's a part of the Avengers, he tones it down a bit. It could even be a bit of an inside joke that Deadpool has to control himself around them. And he could even let the viewers know what he really is feeling if he wants. In the comics, Wade Wilson has been a member of the Avengers, so we know it's going to happen. We just hope Marvel Studios is going to keep Ryan Reynolds in the role. Doctor Doom when it comes to Marvel villains, of course Thanos is one of the first that comes to mind, but comic book fans just can't get enough of Doctor Doom! As incredibly powerful as Thanos is right now, surely the Avengers aren't going to let him win again in Endgame. We have no idea how they're going to reverse the decimation or how they're going to beat Thanos, but we're sure it has nothing to do with Ant-Man turning small and going up into, going on up into Thanos is, you know, is his booty before turning into giant man and blowing the mad tight up from the inside. The devil's anus. Anus? Wait, 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 who's anus? Man, those, those memes happened quick. Ah, anyway, the, the point is once Thanos is dealt with, they'll need a new big bad to focus their attention on. And that big bad could be Doctor Doom. 
After the Fox deal, he's Marvel property, which means he could be the next one to get his butt kicked by Earth's mightiest heroes. Now that we think about it, maybe the Skrulls will be the next villains after Thanos in Phase 4 of the MCU, since they were just introduced in Captain Marvel. They may have seemed like good guys in the movie, but fans of the Secret Invasion storyline in the comics will tell you that these guys are not to be messed with. After they're dealt with, it might be Doctor Doom in Phase 5. Super Skrull Speaking of the Skrulls, the rights to these guys are very confusing. Despite first being introduced in a Fantastic Four comic, these shape-shifting aliens first appeared in the MCU in Captain Marvel. That being said, James Gunn wanted to introduce them in Guardians of the Galaxy, but decided to go in a different direction, so we almost saw them years before Captain Marvel. The most notable scroll is none other than Clert. Yes, that's K-L apostrophe R-T. With a name like that, it's no surprise he's better known as Super Scroll. He has all the powers of the Fantastic Four combined into one person, making him one heck of a powerful foe. Just imagine this stretchy, invisible, flaming thing coming at you and all of the ridiculous feats of strength that he could pull off. He certainly was a handful for the Fantastic Four in the comics. While Super Skrull is technically a Fantastic Four character, like most comic book characters, he's also fought others, including Spider-Man and the Avengers. Now that the Fox deal is complete, Marvel will be able to introduce this character, and we expect to see Super Skrull in Captain Marvel 2. Which hasn't exactly been announced yet, but come on, it made over a billion dollars at the box office. You, uh, you know a sequel's coming. House of M The Disney-Fox merger means we could see some of our favorite comic book storylines involving the X-Men and the Fantastic Four on the big screen, and one that we'd love to see is House of M. After the Avengers disassembled storyline, which is pretty self-explanatory, Wanda Maximoff, aka Scarlet Witch, is struggling to control her immense powers. We haven't seen these immense powers in the MCU just yet, but she's insanely strong. Her brother, Pietro Maximoff, aka Quicksilver, encourages her to use her powers to rewrite reality and give herself a new, happier life. See, we told you she had crazy powers. So she actually ends up doing it, which results in a complete rewriting of history across the whole universe. Because you shouldn't mess with the space-time continuum. Ain't that right, Wong? Only Wolverine and a younger Layla Miller, aka Butterfly, remember the world as it was. But in this new world, the mutants have taken over, with rebels trying to fight the power. However, Wanda's mind is fractured, and she can't maintain control forever. Our heroes eventually find a way back to each other, and team up to put the world back in order. But despite their victory, Wanda still uses her infamous No More Mutants spell to take away 90% of the mutants of the world's powers. With some rewriting, this could definitely work in the MCU. Avengers vs. X-Men As you can tell, we're pretty sure the X-Men will join the MCU at some point, even if it's years from now. Of course, we're definitely going to want to see how the group of mutants will interact with Earth's mightiest heroes, the Avengers. Like every time the Avengers meet someone new, they'll probably fight at first, which has us so excited just thinking about the Hulk and Wolverine going toe-to-toe! -to -toe. Yes, we've seen heroes versus heroes in the MCU before with Civil War, which was more of an Avengers movie than a Captain America film if you think about it. But the Avengers vs. X-Men storyline is much more than just a fight over the Sokovia Accords. It's a battle of differing ideologies. Captain America's determined to keep the world safe from all threats, while Cyclops is trying to keep the mutants safe, but is buckling under pressure. He sees hope in acquiring the Phoenix Force, but Cap sees it as a terrible decision that might destroy the world. In the end, they're both right. The Phoenix Force causes a ton of destruction, but at least it brings the mutants back to their world after finding Hope Summers, its one true host. The storyline would definitely work wonders, since it'd feature all of our favorite heroes. We guarantee it'd make a killing at the box office. Secret Wars Is there anything better than watching superheroes punching each other? Probably not, but we'd be wrong because superheroes teaming up against seemingly unbeatable odds is even better. Which is exactly what happened in the Secret Wars storyline. Believe it or not, despite all the success they're currently having, in the 80s, things weren't looking so good for Marvel. They were actually going bankrupt, so they decided to create a toy line and later built a comic around it, known as, you guessed it, Secret Wars. No one would have thought it'd have such a massive impact on Marvel as a whole back in 1984. 
The story saw our favorite Marvel superheroes and supervillains brought to an alien world so they could fight each other. It sounds a lot like the gladiatorial ring on Scar and Thor Ragnarok ruled by the Grandmaster. But in Secret Wars, it was the enigmatic Beyonder who got everyone together. The story is full of epic moments, including Spider-Man donning his black costume for the very first time that later turns out to be Venom. Oh yeah, and the Hulk lifts an entire mountain. Maybe gravity works differently on this planet. In 2015, they released the Cosmic Odyssey Secret Wars, which featured both the Fantastic Four and the X-Men, with the main villain being Doctor Doom. It would be a great way to introduce them all to the MCU. Four movies a year. If you haven't paid attention to Marvel Studios' movie release schedule, that's fine, we'll fill you in on the details. It's pretty simple. Starting in 2017, they've been releasing three movies a year. But from 2013 to 2016, it was only two movies a year. And before that, it was often just one movie a year. The team has grown so much over the years that they could pump out three movies a year and they're all high quality, top-notch films. Now that is beyond impressive. But is it possible for them to somehow push the envelope even further and start releasing four movies a year? Well, Kevin Feige was asked about this, and he said, I think it depends. It depends on what happens with big corporate deals. It depends on how we're feeling as a studio to grow. In classic Marvel Studios fashion, Kevin Feige is never one to show his hand, but the Disney-Fox merger seems like a big corporate deal to us, don't you think? It would give Marvel so many characters, which makes it seem inevitable that they'll start releasing four movies a year. If this happens, we'd have so much content here at CBR, we'll probably start doing four videos a day! No one has actually told me what I'm doing. Something about Captain America going crazy. Okay, yeah, we take that back. We can't make any guarantees, but you never know what the future holds. 2020. Okay, so we talked about the characters that we're going to be getting from the merger, how they might be incorporated into the MCU, and even what comic book storylines we might finally get to see on the big screen. But when will we actually be able to see all these changes? Well, now that the Disney-Fox merger is official and the deal has gone through, Kevin Feige says that it probably wouldn't impact anything for a handful of years. Yeah, that's not the answer we wanted to hear, but it definitely does make a whole lot of sense when you think about it. Marvel Studios has their movies scheduled multiple years in advance. Sure, if the wheels haven't started turning on a movie scheduled for 2020 or 2021 just yet, they could easily decide to switch it to an X-Men movie or Fantastic Four movie instead. But that's not really their style, especially if they want to make a good Fantastic Four movie like we hope they will. We don't really expect cameos from these characters either because, again, it's not Marvel Studios' style. They like to create a standalone movie for a character and then introduce them into the fold, not the other way around. Well, except for Spider-Man, but he was special. So special. That being said, don't be surprised to see a Fox character pop up in 2020 or 2021, even if it's just in a post credit scene. And that's how the Disney-Fox merger will change the MCU forever. Do you think these changes will happen in the MCU within the next few years, or are we talking a whole bunch of nonsense? Let us know in the comments section below, and don't forget to subscribe to CBR for more MCU videos! Thanks for watching.